even though I've, I've cooked for years, I'm always pleasantly surprised when I cook something and it tastes good. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Rolf Williams from The Food Sermon in Brooklyn, New York. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make two Caribbean staple dishes using codfish. The first dish is fish bouillon, which we always call like broth or boiling. And the second is one of my all-time favorites. It's salted cod with provisions. If you enjoy Caribbean food, these two dishes are staples you would want to know. I am from an island called St. Vincent and Grenadines. Caribbean food growing up in islands had a wide range of stuff. Fresh fish where the fisherman goes around every other day or so with the fresh catch. Around lunchtime you'll have aromas in the air of of, of, of fresh fish broth, or maybe someone is frying some fish or something of that nature. And so my first introduction to authentic Caribbean food was just by smell alone. The first dish I'm making for you is the fish bouillon. A fish bouillon could range from just the fish and just a bunch of green bananas that you cook to a wider range of ground provisions which like sweet potatoes and, and cassava and eddos. We actually call it boiling or broth. It's not heavy. It's usually pretty light. I'm using fresh cod as well as a little bit of the salted cod. Cabbage, onions, garlic, scotch bonnet or habanero just to give it some flavor and some depth. Carrots, eddos, dashing. You're gonna need okra as well. We're gonna be making also some coconut dumplings. I'm gonna roll them a little bit and cut them almost like you would gnocchi, so you can have a little bite-sized portion. Usually you would grate this, but you know, the blender works in essence the same way, and it cuts down some time for you. This is about two cups of water. We're gonna do, you wanna do as little water as possible, right? So I did about half of that. We're gonna blend it until it gets almost like a fine consistency, not quite creamy, it's gonna render a little bit of the coconut milk. So this is about a cup, maybe a little bit more, about two cups of flour. So we do about a teaspoon of salt here. This is kosher salt. Everyone has their own way. Some people add sugar. I think there's enough sweetness in the coconut. So the consistency you're going for is that you're trying to develop gluten. And because I'm putting it into soups, it will be on the softer side for me. We're pretty close to the consistency that I'm looking for. And as you see, I haven't added any more water. This is the moisture from the blending of the coconut here. Put just a little bit more. And we're right where we need to be. Woo! So you see all the specks of the coconut here. That's what's the exciting part of, of the coconut dumpling for me is. You can have a little chew to it, but it'd be nice and fluffy. So we're gonna let this rest for a little bit. 10 minutes or so. So it's gonna do about half of an onion. And it's up to you how you wanna cut it. I like it in a, like a larger dice almost. Put that all into the pan. Need about two cloves of garlic. I love the taste of garlic. I'm not gonna mince it up where it actually melts away. We put this on like a medium heat, medium to high. And I'm actually using some coconut oil. This coconut oil is right from the island. It's the best. And in the meantime, I'm gonna cut up some of the dried cod. And this is gonna give you a depth of flavor. So what are you looking for when you're shopping for salted cod? A fish that's evenly covered with salt, which means it's, it's preserved well. There's no mold or of any kind. If it's a young cod, it's, of course it's gonna have less uh, meat. And believe it or not, there are some people who prefer more uh, bone than the meat itself. Also, you can just use any salted fish. And you see the cod, it's just there to support the rest of the ingredients. And then I'm going to add some of the Chad and Benny here. So now we're building some depth here. I need to put a little bit of salt. All right, so the next step, we're gonna add some water. So that's one quart. We'll add a, another quart in a few. But in the meantime, I'm gonna cut these vegetables or cut the ends off. This is the uh, cassava. Cut it in half here. So this is my way of peeling a little. This is about an inch and a half, two inches. These are the sweet potatoes. 
Here we have Edo's, which are my favorites. They're very starchy. It will actually, when rendered a little bit, it'll make the water a little creamy. We have breadfruit, one of the most popular things in the, in the Caribbean. You can roast these or put them in the oven or steam them, add them to soup. They're very versatile, but you don't need it to be too soft. Maybe just by feel, it'll be, give a little bit and it's ready to go. I like mine's a little soft because it, the, so, uh, the riper it is, the sweeter it is. But you have to be careful because then uh, if it gets too sweet, then it's harder to cook. See that? It's beautiful. It's like a work of art. The reason why this was introduced to the Caribbean was not really for a great reason. Uh, it was used primarily to feed the slaves. We took it over and made it into something of our own, something delicious. It's gonna cook pretty quickly. It's gonna render a little bit of the enzymes that it would, the same way the okra would. Um, so we just have to be mindful of not overcooking it and keep it in there too long because it will make your, your dish a little, lack of a better term, a little slimy. We don't want slimy. I'm gonna add another quart of water here. I separate a cup, uh, the quarts of water and it just, it's just my way of like making a concentrated broth first and then adding some more and then trying to develop more flavor that way. Quick taste. You see where we are? Yeah. So, see? Tasting is key. Because we need some salt. We need a good bit of it. I'm gonna do some fresh cracked pepper. I have a mixture of fresh, uh, fresh black pepper, white pepper, green pepper, and pink peppercorns. I like them all. So I just use them all. Next step, we'll add our scotch bonnet pepper. You cannot make a boiling without your scotch bonnet pepper, at least in the Caribbean. And then I add coconut milk. In each house you go to, there are variations on what is traditional or not. I just go based on the flavors I love from the Caribbean in general. So the Rastafarians used to have Itel shop, and I remember that street, I remember it like yesterday. We would, on my lunch break, which was like, and I was in maybe like grade school, I would run down to the high school, a place called Bishop's College, run down, get some Ital and try to run up. And they would serve it to you in a calabash. And it just has the rice, lentils, no salt. And it was amazing. Because of that, I add my coconut milk and all of that stuff. We're starting to get to a boil, right? I'm just gonna cut up some okras now. And these are probably gonna go in a little later. What I do is I try to add the denser root vegetables in. So in goes the, the dasheen and the eddos. Let's hope this pot cover fits. It's like, find that pot cover, right? And then, you know, you try to, you think this is the one and it goes right into the soup, but I think this is the one. Yes. The broth will be boiling now over medium heat for about another 10 to 15 minutes or so. And now I'm gonna season the cod with a mixture that I have here of just onion, garlic, chalambeni, a little bit of vinegar. I believe in seasoning everything separately. You ever tasted something and it's like, the broth is great, but the protein inside is somehow not as flavorful. And it has to do with, you know, building those levels of flavor that's necessary to yield a proper flavorful dish. So we're gonna let this rest a little bit and then we're gonna roll out our dumplings. I learned making dumplings by just practicing, by mimicking people and just trial by error. And my way, it's not a traditional way. See that, it still has a lot more moisture in there. So it'd be more of a softer dumpling. That's a no-no in, in a bunch of houses where if they eat your dumpling and, and they don't get to chew a bit, before they swallow it, it's, it's a problem. And I'm gonna roll it out and cut one and a half inch portions like that. Almost like little pillows. The dumplings go in. And the way you know the dumplings are done, they're gonna start floating to the top a bit. I would say it's gonna cook for another 10 minutes or so the most, based on the size that I've cut. I'm making the dumplings for the second dish as well while we're at it here. And these are gonna be a little different. 
a little bit more robust and you know, a little firmer. So I work it a little bit more. So now it's time to add the breadfruit. I'm gonna put the cod in whole because as it cooks, it'll break apart. Get all that goodness in there. And I wanna add just a little bit more water. Okra, that goes in there too. Last thing I'm gonna do is just add some carrots. Give it some color, maybe two minutes and it'll be ready. Check on these dumplings. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> I'm eating with my hands, it's good. I'm gonna squeeze some of that. It's gonna brighten it up, half of a lime. I'm excited, look at that. See the cod, a little bit of cabbage, the carrots. Okra, still have their color, right? You don't want it to be overcooked and mushy. I don't know which part to taste. Do I taste the part with the cod? Do I taste another piece of dumpling? What do I do? Like, <laughs> I'm excited, I don't know. So, the coconut milk and the salt from the cod and when, when I say cod, I'm talking about the salted cod. Had a certain depth of flavor, but adding that hit of lime totally like brings it on home. I don't need, I'm gonna just turn this off right now. It's, it's finished, it's ready to go. Let me tell you something about this pepper. The fear is that, Lord, help it not to burst in my pot, right? If it bursts, I mean, it's gonna be good still, but it's gonna be a lot more interesting, but, I think we're good. I think I made it through, I, it didn't burst. All right, so get some of the cabbage. And I think there's a dumpling in there, see? There we go. This is my boiling here. All broth or fish bouillon with all the Caribbean flavors. I like a little bit more lime than most. So I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit more. And then, you know, you eat in boiling, you gotta, you gotta hear that little clank as you go in. People know it's, you know, that's how you know it's good. You know, there's no manners when you're eating this, right? I'm already, <laughs> let's see. Mm. <laughs> this is good. I'm always pleasantly surprised, even though I've, I've cooked for years, I'm always pleasantly surprised when I cook something and it tastes good. <laughs> you know what I mean? The okra still has the bite. You can taste the, the little on the back note, you can taste the flavor from the scotch bonnet pepper. You know, in the islands, we don't care what is hot or, or, or cold when it comes to soups or, or broths. So we, we eat it any time. So, like, we can eat this for lunch, lunch or dinner, especially when you're sick. Maybe you have, like, a fish one or a chicken one with a little bit more spice to it. I mean, some people eat it for breakfast if you want to. Like, if you have some leftover and you just, yeah, they just sit down and eat it in the morning time. It's, it's probably actually decent, pretty cold. You can eat it cold if you wanted to. Five Caribbean dishes that everyone must try. Roti, it doesn't matter if it's the chicken, goat, doesn't matter. Boiling, of course. Bacon shark, not bacon shark. Bake, as in fried dumpling and fried shark. Codfish and bake, and let's say a good pea soup. Jerk chicken. Can't miss jerk chicken. This next dish is called salted cod with provisions. Provisions are, it depends on who you speak to. They're root vegetables, but they're also vegetables that come, or fruits that come from a tree. You know, you have like bananas, green bananas, your plantain, you have your breadfruit. Then the root vegetables, you have your edos and your sweet potatoes, your dasheen, your tanya. People eat this a lot. Like my mom, it's her go-to thing. If it's like her last meal on earth, she would have that. She'll kill me for this, for saying this, but I, it's true. <laughs> so what I'm doing now with this cod is, you know, you try to get as much as the bones out as possible. Well, it depends on who you're serving it to. You'll try to get all the bones out, but if it's like, like a family member, yeah, you're not getting all the bones out. You don't want to, it's too much work and it's more fun with the bones. <laughs> and we're going to steam the provisions and you have your potatoes, sweet potatoes. And then you have your edos, you're gonna steam those as well. I got this dasheen. 
I'm getting complicated because like I'm roasting this breadfruit and that's how it is with this kind of dish. It's like you can make things up and, and add or subtract. The smell of roasted breadfruit, dude, like air freshener overload. Like this is aromatherapy for me. It just brings back so many memories. Like, and I roast it on the fire, even though I know it's gonna make a mess. I could easily just take it and put it in the oven, but it doesn't have that smell. That smell is key. That's the one thing that's missing is that, that smoke, that, that element of being cooked in the yard on those three stones with the wood and the fire, like that smoky element that's coming off of this breadfruit right now is what's missing from everything I cook in America because it needs that smoke. We have our codfish ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna cut some onions, cut up some bell peppers, uh, get some of the red in there for a color. So I'm gonna cut these kind of rough. We have a little bit of cabbage. This might be a little controversial, putting cabbage in your sawfish. I love it. Some more of the culantro or, or Chatham Benny. It has a level of freshness, cilantro meats like thyme, a little bit of citrus notes. It just brightens it up, brightens up the dish. The tomatoes, and there's no rules to how you cut this, right? What I wanted to do, is I wanted to break down because it's gonna have oil, a little salt in there. It's gonna make its own sauce. We call this a Christophine. We're gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. So cutting up the Scotch bonnet. I'm just adding in with the tomatoes. So I cut it this small. You're gonna get the heat. You're not gonna know where it's coming from. All right, so I'm gonna add these onions and Christophine in. Add a little bit of salt, a bit of pepper. Real quick, add the tomatoes. Tomatoes are gonna render and release their juices. A little bit of coconut oil, but you can use whatever oil you want. Some people add a little butter. I have a love-hate relationship with butter, and the reason why is that all butters for me should have smoke again. So I don't use it that much. I don't miss it. It's already starting to render. Right now I would add my cod. Like this fin right here, people fight over that. So you may see some bones if you, put, you pick the bones out if you have to, but everyone knows to enter with caution on that. Oh man. I wish you could taste this. It's so, it's so good. And then now I'm just gonna add this at the end. The cabbage with the chat and Benny. So right there is where I stop. I turn the flame off right there. What will happen is you have a level of carryover cooking. Cause right now it's, it's still steaming. It's still cooking. But I don't want all this goodness to overcook. Give a little pinch of salt. Well, that's a little bit more than a pinch there. Yeah. And a little more pepper. We're good to go. So here we have our salted water. We have our salted water for our dumplings, for our coconut dumplings. And so we're just gonna end, put that in the water and then when it floats to the top, it's ready to go. We have our provisions already cooked and ready. Breadfruit, cutting it close on the breadfruit there. So how do you know a breadfruit is done? But you can tell this is not done based on here, but, but just to demonstrate, in the islands we use what's called a pointer. The, the spines of the coconut branches, you have like, you'll shave it off and you're left with the spine of it, right? And you'll take it and you put it into the head of the breadfruit. Then if it goes too easily and comes out clean, then you know it's ready. It's like a pie or something, but this, I pushed it in and it gave me some resistance, which means it needs to go a little longer. Just gonna peel it, cut off the certain ends, the discolored ends. That's the dasheen. Here we go with the edo. This is like slicing through butter when you cut that, when it's ready, see? See, when you steam it, it has like a totally different texture than when if you boil it. Hot stuff, man. So usually you have like a towel. You have a towel and you peel it, but I'm, I don't know what I'm being, I'm being stubborn. I don't understand why I just won't get a towel. <laughs> we do that all the time. Ooh, look at these, these are ready. Ready to rock. Do a little bit more of this coconut oil on there. First piece of me. Nice and firm and still very sweet. Lay a couple pieces out. I love potatoes, sweet potatoes, so I put a, about two pieces. 
This is the uh, Edo's. Lay that out as well there. The dasheen. I'm going to cut it this way. The dumplings. See, even when it's off the heat, you still had a little carryover cooking, which allowed for the cabbage to be wilted a little bit. I'm just going to put this right here in the middle there. Cod, pieces of cod here. It's a little drizzle, coconut oil. I think the breadfruit kinda made it, let's see. It did make it. So normally you do like a little peeling action, going around, going around, going around. But I'm just gonna bust it down. We'll see, I'll I have to taste this one to see. It looks, you see that? Uh, it's not ready. Yeah, we can't use this, it's not grit. So you have your cod with provisions. It's good, it's delicious. Now, another application for this bake, this dumpling is to fry it and then you put this in between it, right? Um, but right now it's, it's good, healthy, trying to get that, uh, that quarantine weight off. Yeah, this is a good way to go. All right guys, those were two of my favorite Caribbean dishes. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give us a like. Go ahead and subscribe to Food & Wine's YouTube channel. And let us know in your comments below what your favorite Caribbean dishes are. I'm Ralston Williams. Come and visit me at the Food Seminar in Brooklyn. We'll catch you next time.